Hey guys, Youngblood with you, and today I wanted to talk about the Cutlass update we just received from CIG about where it's really been, where it's going, um, and kind of where it's at today. So I'm going to kind of skip over that first part, primarily because it's a history lesson, more or less, about what the ship was meant to be, and that's primarily a middle ground between a fighter and a freighter. And it was initially designed to be primarily a pirate ship. The ship, as we've talked about on this channel before, suffered from one very major design flaw, and that was the thruster placement and the performance, along with the unpredictability of those rotating engines. And we arrived at that issue for a couple of reasons. The first of which was the original maneuvering thrusters were not placed in a way that was real conducive to good yaw, and that counteracted that and was just kind of presented with maneuverability issues. Um, on top of that, the primary engines were placed on a swivel to try and help out, um, but that swivel is demonstrated early in release when I did my combat viability video, um, is what causes so many issues with this ship, even though it did get some fairly major improvements down the line. Now, it was just underwhelming as a ship, though, but another major issue that they ran into was that the current IFCS flight modes weren't really designed to handle the cutlass and the placement of the thrusters and the way they had to work. The ship was just poorly optimized in the flight model, and we could all feel it, even if we didn't really know what was happening or what the real cause of it was. Now, this had been something that was being worked on for a really long time, actually, but there were roadblocks along the way, including utilizing outsourcers, um, changes in the vision, and most importantly, Squadron 42 taking priority over all, and the Cutlass kept getting relinquished to the back burner. There's a lot more detailed accounts in the article that I'm going to link in the description, but let's focus more on where we're going from here to kind of help with some of the updates that they've provided. <clears throat> I think one thing that's important to say early on, and I think it was just a really good note that they put in the wrap-up section, was that the Cutlass will not drop the focus of being a fighter with a cargo hold that is intended for piracy, and that the ship is going to be more maneuverable in Alpha 2.0. I think for those of you that are passionate about the Cutlass, that's very good news. As far as some of the work that's been done on this ship recently, we see that the cockpit's getting updated with weapons lockers and having the second seat display updated with a single screen in a 16x9 format, which is designed to help the control of systems effectively across the ship, like we've seen with the Constellation updates. In the crew area, we now have confirmation that the beds are following other design themes and are now escape pods as well. We get more weapons lockers and storage built into the walls with smuggling in mind, um, and I think a really exciting change with the design note was that the turret passageway is now the standard two meters wide. Um, for And that's the same that the stock standard docking collars are, meaning that you can now destroy turrets to create a new entry point onto an enemy ship. And if you're thinking about gameplay mechanics, that's a lot of potential entry points for ships with many turrets. The primary room is going to be kind of varying based on the variant, um, but the black now gets a cargo lift where everything is stored, and it sounds to me like that means it'll drop out of the bottom like the Constellation. I say that also because the way they talk about the blue, they said they're considering moving the holding cells into the middle to make unloading or prison prisoners easier. The red actually gets what I consider to be the most exciting design note, um, and that's having a uh, escape pod recovery system, which can really tractor pods into an airlock and then bring them up through the floor. And that's got me rethinking the red because that sounds like a lot of fun to play. And they also go on to mention other potential variants or modules, like having a dropship module like the Retaliator has. The rear ramp area also got reworked too, including a docker, docking collar uh, on the ceiling with an updated consistent 2 meter size, which is now also going to allow for cargo crates to actually fit through that space. Uh, it also got an additional rear door, um, so you can now access this without depressurizing the rest of the ship. And finally, we get notes about the uh, exterior having the rear engines kind of moved in more to be in line with the front wings and having better and better placed and better optimized thrusters all of which were very good changes. So outside of all that work, which is already being addressed, the ship is expensive. And it's not financially real expensive, but as far as in-game resources go, it was the largest asset in Arena Commander, which is why when one spawned or one was destroyed, the system just freaked out. As part of their redesign, um, much with like, like what's happening with the new Constellation, the Cutlass is now about half the resources that it once was. And that means not only is it much more manageable on the system, but it's also easier to work on as rendering takes less time, meaning faster updates for the design teams. 
And other updates getting ready for 2.0 are getting the user interface uh, for the system management in place. And with that new display for the co-pilot uh, and behind the scenes changes, the ship is going to be more functional than ever. Uh, for those of you who had a Cutlass, you know the buttons really sucked. You know, I had one and they really did suck, mostly because of the placement. And they really could drive you kind of crazy because you'd try and open something like the door and then the turret would come down or whatever else. Um, those have been redone and they're more intuitive and more responsive. As far as the flight is concerned, the IFCS and the thrusters are now cooperating, which is going to help negate some of those unexpected flight mechanics that we've been experiencing. Oh, and it was made to be faster. And basically, every perspective role of the Cutlass and its variants would benefit from speed, so it was balanced out some. Um, now, to what speed, we don't know, but it is going to be faster. And yes, the cockpit fans are now back. The work that's been done on the Cutlass and the work really that's been done with multi-crew ships getting ready for 2.0 mean that fixing this ship should be a relatively quick task once they start. They openly admit, though, that they don't know when they're going to start with so many other priorities in place. Uh, one other final note is we get our first real information on the Buccaneer, um, and they go on to say that the Buccaneer, which is not going to be the final name, is going to be fast and very agile with weapons probably similar to a smaller Sucker Punch, and it's going to have very limited cargo space to fill the role of a pirate interceptor. They say that the price is going to be similar to the Cutlass, so it'll probably have some neat tricks up its sleeves because that's pretty expensive for a ship that's going to be in that kind of role. Um, but, you know, they also go on to say that it could potentially dock with a Caterpillar or even attach to create some crazy ugly ship, um, which is a really interesting thought if they decide to move forward with that. Now, as far as the exchange, you know, it's been considered, you know, they may let you just swap from one to the other. I'm sure it's going to follow the standard ship upgrade path or the CCU downgrades that have been mentioned. Um, but it's worth noting that if you still hate the Cutlass, there's possible options for those piracy roles that are going to be coming from Drake Interplanetary. So I thought this article was really well written, and it's worth reading if you want to know more, because I just kind of covered what I thought were some of the more important points. Um, it should serve well, at least as an olive branch to those that have kind of become disenfranchised Cutlass owners, though. So if you have questions, let me know. Otherwise, stay tuned for a whole lot more updates. Have yourselves a great weekend, and take care.